One major, major conspiracy in Christianity is not to tell you what all those stories are there for in the Old Testament. Because if you figure that out, you can see the end days perfectly. What is the book of Esther? The book of Esther, as well as the book of Genesis and the book of Ruth and all these stories are showing you patterns exactly for the last days. It's all prophecy, all of it. What your job is, and my job is, is to learn who is who. In other words, who is Joseph? Well, Joseph's, Joseph is a picture of Jesus. Well, who is this? Who is that? For today, that is what we're supposed to do with those stories. We're, we're supposed to translate them into revelational, prophetical understanding. That's what... They are there for That is one major reason why they're there. So what is the book of Esther? Who is who? Well, I'll tell you right now. If you're ready for it, you ain't going to learn this in a seminary. You're only going to learn this by people who have the revelation. The book of Esther. Let's just start it off. The king. The king. There is God the father. Mordecai. Is Jesus. Haman is the Antichrist who tries to have all the Jews killed. Esther, who is Esther? Esther is Michael the Archangel, the one who stands for Israel. And Haman has a father, which is a picture of Satan. In Esther, there are two gatherings. That is the same for today. There's one for the man-child, which is us, and then the woman, which is Israel at the end. Haman has devices, devices he has put into place to kill the Jews, to destroy them. That is today, the Antichrist and artificial intelligence devices, AI, like in the book of Joshua. In the book of Esther, it even calls Haman the adversary. The name adversary actually means Satan. Haman is the adversary, the Antichrist. And what happens? Mordecai takes the crown because it's given to him lawfully by the father. And Haman loses it. And Mordecai is a Jew, and everything gets switched around back on Haman and his, which is the Antichrist and the seed of the serpent, and the Jews make a decree. There are covenants made, or decrees. Get it? Covenants? It's all a picture of the last days. It's all prophetical. All you have to do is... Understand who is everybody playing and what does it all mean? I've told you some of it. Another thing is, there is a memoriam. In the book of Esther, this is where the celebration of the Jews, which is called Purim, was created. Purim. And Purim was, a two, it was to celebrate two days, or prophetically, revelationally, 2,000 years, the dispensation of grace. And it was with the Jews and everybody that had been grafted in that stood with the Jews. Hence the Gentiles. Times of the Gentiles. And this was called Purim. Now this celebration of these two days called Purim also goes back to the book of Genesis. After the first two years into the famine... They went up to the father's house and ate with them. And he said, Benjamin, you made five times more the mess. Why Benjamin? Because Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, is the apostle to, is from the line of Benjamin. So who is Benjamin? Benjamin is a picture of the body of Christ. And he said, you made five times more the mess. Five is the number for grace. And then Benjamin 
is given 300 pieces of silver and 5 raiment. 305 in the Strong's Concordance means to ascend. That is a picture of the man-child, the body of Christ, ascending before the woman. Now going back to Esther, they're all connected and tied in together. And again, two years into it is 2025, like I've been saying. 20 times 25 is 500. 500 in the Strong's Concordance is two things. Antichrist, bada bing, bada bang. And God ascends. There you go. The glory of God is in us. Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. And this goes back. It's all connected to Exodus chapter 40. 40 is the number of jubilees. Again, there's the two days in Esther. 2,000 years, 40 jubilees. A jubilee is 50 years. 40 times 50 is 2,000. The times of the Gentiles, the dispensation of grace. And in Exodus chapter 40, we get a picture of the rapture and of Jacob's trouble because the cloud was hovering on the tabernacle of Israel and they could not move forward until the cloud was taken up. And the cloud was full of God's glory. That's the body of Christ. And it had to be taken up first in order for Israel to continue on their journey. And that journey is 42 months in the book of Revelation, Jacob's trouble. Also seen in Daniel chapter 12, Jacob's trouble is 42 months. But when Michael the archangel stands up in Daniel chapter 12, that is when everybody is glorified. That's 2025. He stands up, kicks Satan out of heaven in 2025. That's why you see Antichrist for 500. In the body of Christ, we are glorified. At that time, Michael shall stand up and many that turn many to righteousness will be uh, as the brightness of the firmament and shine like the stars forever and ever. There are two gatherings in the book of Esther. Two gatherings. That's showing us two gatherings. The man-child and the woman at the end. This is how all scripture is connected. I can't just sit here and talk about one thing because it's all connected. This is what Paul is talking about when he says all scripture is profitable for doctrine. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. You won't hear this understanding from people who don't have revelation, from religious people, from people who call themselves some denomination, a dispensationalist. It's hard for them to see things like this because they're so stuck in this idea of the Bible that does not exist. The Bible is way more connected than it is divided. Just like the Godhead. There are three parts to the Godhead. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Well, that's just like scripture. It is different parts, but it is all one. And it is more one than it is different parts. Do we see that? Jesus said, I can do nothing without my father. That's like scripture. If you're a mid acts dispensationalist and say, well, only Paul. Well, Paul would mean nothing without the rest of the scriptures. See that? Just like Jesus said, I can do nothing without my father. Scripture is divided the same way. You can't do nothing with scripture without the other scripture. That is the truth. And just like your head. What is it called in the Bible? God head. The God head has three parts that are one. Your brain has three parts that are one. Your head, the front, the middle, and the back. And these three are one. If your brain only has one part working and not the others, then you're mentally disabled and you cannot do, it doesn't work correctly. You see that? No offense to anybody that's mentally disabled. I pray for you. I hope that God heals you in every way, shape, and form. But I'm just using this as an example. It's the same exact thing. It's all connected like the golden spiral. It just keeps expanding. The understanding should keep expanding. This is what seminary does not teach because they they're not expanding in the revelation. Say, we got it all figured out. This is what we teach. It's like any denomination, dispensationalism, Calvinism. I don't care what you call it. They're stuck in a religious box. They're stuck in the black cube, the Kaaba. The black cube that is on every 
QR code that you buy, the black cube, it's everywhere. They're stuck in that cube. Don't get stuck in that cube. Let God reveal things to you. So going back to the book of Esther, it's all there. Now getting to Purim. Purim was created in the book of Esther, celebrating two days. Like I said, symbolic of 2,000 years for the dispensation of grace. Also symbolic of the two years into the famine in the book of Genesis. That after the two years, they were called up to their father's house, Jacob. Well, after the two years, in this last seven years, we will also be called up to the father and dine with him in his house. And after the 2,000 years, you see the connection? It's all connected. 2,000 years of grace. That ends in 2025. You see how scripture is all connected more than it's divided? You just have to be able to see it. Now, here's the crazy thing about all this. <laughs> this is the best part, baby. <laughs> and you ain't going to hear this. You ain't going to hear this anywhere. <sighs> is that in 2025, right before the Hebrew New Year starts, the Hebrew New Year starts on Nissan 1, which I believe is late March. Right before that, I believe. Uh, this now, not now. This part I know. I, I think that that's when the new year starts. Nissan one, but right before that, March fourteenth, two thousand twenty-five is a full blood moon. Now, hold on a second. This is not any normal blood moon. This is the first blood moon in three years, twenty twenty-four, twenty-three, and twenty-two. There was no full blood moons. There was only partial partial eclipses. That is the first full blood moon. In three years, that is an anomaly in itself because usually there's blood moons like every year. They're called lunar eclipses. Well, check this out. The blood moon is the 13th and the 14th of March. Do you know when Purim lands on? The 13th and 14th of March. The full blood moon in the first one in three years. Purim of all days celebrations it's Purim celebrating the two days in the book of Esther which is translated into 2,000 years in the dispensation of grace which is also translated in the two years in the famine because the famine we're in the last seven 2023 and 24 is the two years into the seven years of famine like the book of Genesis Pharaoh's dream and I believe that that is when the man child is caught up. I know that I've been saying 923, but I believe 923, September 23rd, is for Israel, the woman. And that's why it's connected back to the Revelation chapter 12 sign, the woman in the heaven clothed with the sun, the crown with the 12 stars. That happened in 2017 on 923. Again, you see the connection, 923, Feast of Trumpets in 2025. If you do a day count from those two things, you get 2,922 days. 2922 literally translates to, in the Strong's Concordance, lamb and covered for protection. Well, that is what the 2017 Revelation 12 sign showed. The woman clothed with the sun, the lamb, skins, it's all connected. That's Israel. And that is, I believe, Revelation chapter 7. When the 144,000 are sealed with the seal of God in their forehead. Also, Romans 11:26, hence the year 2026. When uh, the deliverer will roar out of Zion. Again, there's a great deliverance in Genesis chapter 45. When Benjamin goes up and eats with the father. The great deliverance. The deliverer. See how it's all connected with the years that we're into? Because Genesis chapter 45 is 20 plus 25. There's so much information in this video I'm making. I have to do it like this because there's no other way my brain works. Romans 11, 26. Romans 11, 25. Get it? 25. Talks about the fullness of the Gentiles. Get it? Times of the Gentiles. After the two days or 2,000 years or two years into the famine. All scripture is connected. And to divide it like some dispensationalists do is abomination. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible. So again, I think that blood moon that lands on Purim is 
it for the man child. Remember, this goes back to Revelation chapter 12. If we do everything in order, the man child is caught up first. That's a picture of the body of Christ. And then once the devil realizes he's cast out because of Michael and the archangels, uh, Michael and the angels, then he goes and persecutes the woman for 42 months. I believe from that blood moon that he gets cast out. And six months later, that's that time where he's figuring out that he's cast out. He can't go back into heaven. That six months to 923, the same year, is when he goes 42 months to persecute the woman. That's what I believe. That's what I think happens. And remember, 2025 is Antichrist because 20 times 25 is 500. Antichrist, 500 in the Strong's Concordance. And it's also God ascends, picture of the body of Christ. But I believe we ascend first, the man child. That's what I believe. We have to rightly divide that. See, some right division is correct, 2 Timothy 2.15. But not, not like the way that they do it. So again, this, I know it's scattered information, but it's the only way I can do it because there's so much information here. Just know that the Old Testament books are all types and shadows of everything. It shows you the whole picture in these stories. You just have to figure out who is that in the Old Testament as, and how do I apply it today? Benjamin, in the book of Genesis, was the youngest, symbolic of the body of Christ. We are the younger one. And Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles, and he was from the tribe of Benjamin. See how it's all connected? And Benjamin made five times more the mess. And his Jacob, his father, said that. And the number five is the number for grace. Jacob was type and shadow of Father God. See, it's all... We did, that's the whole thing to it. You just got to figure out who's playing who. That's it. So that's where I'm at. 923 is for Israel. That's why 9 in the Strong's Concordance means uh, a lost thing, the lost thing. And 23 means my father has gathered. That's Israel, the lost sheep of Israel. That's Israel. I believe our rapture, the man-child, is the blood moon that lands on Purim, March 13th and 14th, six months before that. And I believe the devil gets cast out. And if you look in the Strong's Concordance, there are some very interesting things. The words, like 313, March 13th, under the Strong's Concordance. You might want to check that out. So again, that's, that's hidden wisdom. You ain't going to hear this from people. They don't see this yet. This is when the books are being opened. This is the last day's revelation. That's what the whole Bible is about. It's God declaring the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46, verse 10. God declares the end from the beginning. How does he do that? Why don't mid-Acts dispensationalists tell me, how does God declare the end from the beginning? How does he do that? Well, he does that because all those stories in the Old Testament are all types, shadows for the last days and the full story. You say, well, God declares the end from the beginning. Okay, how does he do that? By what means? Well, by all those stories. They're exact. They're showing us what is happening now. That's why. But you get a mid-axe dispensationalist. They got the blinders on. They don't want to see it. They don't want to see it. Well, what is Proverbs 25? To it is the glory of God to conceal a thing is the honor of kings to search a matter out. God conceals things. Where would he conceal those things? Maybe in the Old Testament, in his word? I mean, they are so friggin' off. Paul said, covet one thing, one gift, the most. You know what that is? Prophesying. Paul said, covet, covet prophesying. What does covet mean? It means desire, want, desire, prophesying. And the only way, well, not the only way, but the main way that you're going to be doing that is by looking into the Old Testament that is showing you the future. It's all showing you the future. So you need that. God can do anything. He could just tell you things straight up. And he does that to me too. He just connects all these things for me. But 
you know when he did it the most? I sat and read the book of Esther yesterday and a boom, 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 hitting me like a machine gun. He's showing me this is, who, this is who that is. This is who that is. This is who that is. I'm like, oh my gosh. It's obvious now. I mean, it's referring to everything, just like the book of Joshua refers to artificial intelligence, AI. And there's so much to talk about. But, you know, they have strangled people out of revelation and prophesying. Covet one gift the most, Paul says. That is prophesying. And one big way you're going to do that is understanding who is playing who in the Old Testament. You, it's like going into a mall. You need a key. Okay, this is over here. This is that. You need to know who who is who. Who is the type of shadow? Jacob in the book of Genesis is a type of shadow of God the Father. Joseph in the book of Genesis is a type and shadow of Jesus, right? Benjamin is a type and shadow of Paul in the body of Christ. All these things, the two days in the book of Genesis, uh, excuse me, the, the two years in the book of Genesis, a famine, is a picture of us going through the first two years of the last seven years, which gets us to where? 2025. <laughs> it's all there. It's all there. It's, inc it's too incredible for me to go. I can't. It's too much. It's overflowing, press, press down, measure overflowing. When Jesus talks about that, I'm not talking about only physical things. He's talking about revelation, prophesying, understanding, light, knowledge, wisdom, Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. Press down, shaken, you know, when Jesus said that. Being blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. What's a heavenly place? Well, the kingdom of God is within you. So what's a heavenly place? Well, you are the temple of God and the spirit of God is in you. You're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You are the heavenly place. 